Good morning, first graders. We are going to get started on chapter 16. Trivia question is, who does Rodney think October J is? Chapter 16 is called, I don't think that's even correct grammar. Come on, Rodney, tell me what you found, I said. Can't stop in a groove. Rodney stopped typing long enough to drain a glass of goat's milk, then started up again. I sat next to my brother watching him work. He was sitting in front of four monitors, each streaming information that made no sense to me. He loved a challenge and had started doing research yesterday as soon as I had asked him. I flipped through a stack of papers in front of me. One of them was an email from Oscar Redding to our family, just like the one he had sent the Johnsons. Like Benny said, it made sense. We had destroyed his factory during one of our battles, so he wanted to get the families to stop fighting. From what I could tell, Oscar worked with the Johnsons until they'd agreed to meet with our family. Then Oscar had contacted Grandpa. Grandpa had discussed it with the family and said we were willing to talk, but Oscar never wrote back. He had worked so hard to get the families to meet, and then for some reason, he just dropped the whole issue. I wanted to find out everything I could about this man, but so far my research had been turning up dead ends. That's when I remembered the citizen who Juanita said called her family in the first place. Where did that citizen get his information anyway? And what about the citizen who had called us? I asked Rodney if he could track the phone number and Rodney boasted he'd have it for me in less than five minutes. That was 45 minutes ago. He was still looking. My brother stopped typing, but it was only to push his glasses farther up his nose. He scowled at the screen. Oh, you think a triple cross transatlantic relay pattern's going to stop me? Rodney said to his computer. Well, that's child's play, my friend. Do you hear me? Child's play. He started typing again. Do you think you'll be able to find it? I asked. Rodney stopped and looked over his glasses at me. Please, Rafter, it's me you're talking to. He went back to work. A speaker on the desk crackled to life. Rodney, Rafter, it's dinner time. Come and get it while it's cold. That was Mom's little joke. It seemed like every other night we had cold mashed potatoes and chard for dinner. Another superhero diet staple. I pressed a button on the speaker. We'll be right up, Mom. Rodney tapped the return key and stared at the screen. And there we have it. He pointed at the monitor. October J. That's who owns the phone that called in the robbery on the White Knight, Ronnie said. October Johnson. You know what this means, right, Rafter? I had no idea what it meant. You've cracked the problem that has been plaguing us for years. What problem is that? I didn't feel like I had cracked anything. The Johnsons usually only send four people to the battles, Ronnie said. We usually have six to eight, and yet they still manage to win half the time. He tapped the screen. This is why. I still don't get it, I admitted. The J doesn't have to stand for Johnson. Maybe it stands for something else. Rodney ignored me. They know where the battles are going to be ahead of time. It's like having home court advantage. They decide where they want to fight. Then they call us up and we go running. That's why we struggle even though we have more people. I wasn't convinced. Maybe. Rodney flicked the power switch and headed upstairs. I followed. I stopped on the third stair from the, from the top. If Rodney was right, then that meant Juanita had been lying. Not about everything. I really did believe she had a worthless power now. But maybe she wasn't giving us the whole truth. But once again, I felt the nagging sensation that I was missing something. A key piece of information. Tactics. Something tickled the back of my brain. Why did Oscar Redding stop trying to reconcile the families? That seemed to be crucial. If I could just figure that piece of the puzzle out, I was convinced the rest would fall into place. Mom, Rodney, and Benny were already at the table. Dad brought over bowls of cold mashed potatoes, chard, and lime wedges. I dished up food and pushed it around on my plate. Why do we have to eat this stuff again, I asked. Superheroes have always eaten this food, Sweeney, Mom said. It gives us energy to fight the Johnsons. She shook her fist. A week ago, I might have accepted that answer. Betty and I don't get to fight the Johnsons. We get to work in the motor pool. I think we should get to eat burgers and french fries. 
Dad changed the subject. How was your first day of training? Dad asked, dumping mashed potatoes onto his plate. Training's fine, Benny said. What's Dirk got you studying? Flamethrowers, the modified 1942 army jeep? Or what about the grappling hook on the hovercraft? When you hook that baby up to a helicopter, all sorts of fun stuff happens. Glove compartments, Benny said. Glove compartments, Dad asked. Glove compartments, Benny replied. Dad looked puzzled. Really? That doesn't seem like the most exciting place to start. I mean, I guess the glove compartment's important if you're not quite sure where to store your gloves, but you boys know where to store gloves, right? Feel free to bring up the matter with Dirk, I said. I'd be more than happy to start with something more exciting. Oh, no, Dad said, shaking his head. Dirk knows his machines. If he started you on the glove compartment, then that's the best place to start. Did you know, Benny said, that a T9 reinforced glove compartment, once properly secured, can contain an explosion of up to 2.7 sticks of dynamite without hurting the rest of the car? Benny had really been studying that book. That sounds interesting, Dad said, although it was clear from his tone that he didn't think it was. The only thing I don't get, Benny said, is that I don't think you'd often have a 2.7 sticks of dynamite lit at the same time. It seems like you'd either have two sticks or three sticks, but not 2.7. I guess if you had three sticks, you could always cut off part of one of the sticks before you put it in the glove compartment. But then again, if the sticks were already lit, I'd just drop them and run. I don't think cutting up dynamite is such a good idea. Little brother, Rodney said, You're, you've succeeded in making this the most boring dinner conversation of all time. Benny wasn't through. What do you think would happen if you put three sticks in the glove compartment? Would it completely destroy the car? Would it just do 0.3 sticks worth of damage? Well, I suppose it would. Dad clearly had no interest in glove compartments. I guess if you had some really good scissors, you could cut the dynamite, Benny said. But scissors aren't standard on the utility belts. I guess you could bite the dynamite, but if the dynamite went off when you were biting, I'd hate to have to explain that to the dentist. The dentist. For some reason, my mind seized on the word like it was important. Suddenly, I felt a vibration in my pocket. At the same time, I heard a buzz from across the table and two chimes and a chicken cluck. All at once, everybody was reaching into their pockets. I dug out my phone and read the message on the screen. Who will be left to save the day when all the heroes are gone? With love, the Johnsons. What is this nonsense, Dad said. I don't think that's even correct grammar. Shouldn't it be whom? I rubbed at my ears. Can anybody else hear that humming, I asked? The, an electronic squealing noise filled the air. It came from outside and it was getting higher and higher in pitch. I don't hear anything, Dad said. Neither did Mom. But Benny and Rodney both did. I stood and moved to the window. The noise was getting painful. From where I stood, I could see the lights of downtown, the sprawling suburbs, and then a flash. At first, it was a pinprick, almost like a single star close to the horizon. And then the lightning flared into the sky, not from the sky, into the sky. The lightning came from the pinprick of light east of downtown. The night erupted into bright white light and that's the end of chapter 16. Chapter 17 we'll read tomorrow it's called To the Mis Mitsubishi. To the Mitsubishi.